Wow! Humans can distinguish between more than one trillion scents, and each person has a unique odor. <laughs> Tell me about it. Eh, just kidding. This ain't smell o vision But have you ever wondered how this sense is possible? Well, let's uh, <laughs> sniff around and find out. Imagine you're eating a freshly baked cookie. Mmm. Not only does it smell good, but it tastes delicious. As it crumbles in your mouth, it starts to release little molecules. These travel through the back of your throat, while some of them make their way into your nose. Now, picture yourself walking into a room with a vanilla scented candle. You identify the musky smell through a process called diffusion. Air and odor molecules spread freely in all directions until they reach your nose. Let me shrink myself down to the size of an odor molecule, and I'll show you how it works. As you take a deep breath, I'll enter through your nose, the first organ of your respiratory system. Careful, don't trip on the boogers. Can you see those thick little hairs inside your nostrils? Those act as security guards, and they're as thick as the follicles on your head. Their job is to stop dust, debris, germs, and other particles from getting into your lungs. The shiny stuff on the edges of the hairs is mucus. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It traps the unwelcome particles that show up in your nose. It also keeps the lining of your nose moist, because the skin there is very sensitive and needs constant hydration. Uh-oh, watch out! Sometimes I have to dodge these big, fleshy things that occasionally invade here. But not to worry. These are called fingers, and they're only interested in mining for the boogers. Further in, there are some tiny hairs called the cilia, but you can only see them through a microscope. They're another defense mechanism in your system. You've also got these in your ears and other parts of your body. When unwelcome visitors get trapped, the cilia move back and forth to push the mucus out of the way. They send it to either the back of your throat or to the front of your nose. Finally, we have some room. Ah, <sighs> This huge chamber is the nasal cavity. It goes all the way to the upper back of your throat. Its job is to filter, moisturize, and warm up the air you inhale. Can you see those three extended pieces on the wall of your nasal cavity that look like small hot dogs? Those are the turbinate, and you've got three in each nostril. The first turbinate is the first tissue to meet the outside air. Oxygen molecules will go down that slide that leads to your lungs, but we're heading the other way. Some odor molecules go into your lungs too, but they come right out when you exhale. Look up at that thin layer of mucus. That's where we're headed. Right underneath the mucus, you've got more cilia, and then there's the olfactory epithelium. This is a very special tissue lying on the roof of your nasal chamber. Think of it as a block of soft, squishy sponges that contains a lot of important things, like the smell detectors leading to your brain. Oh, look! There are some teeny tiny things branching out like little plant roots. Those are the dendrite, and they're extensions of your nerve cells. You've got around 8 million neurons in each nostril. Let's squeeze through and see what's going on further in. Ah, here we are! These round little guys that look like small cherry seeds are your smell receptors. And they're supported by other cells, like a bunch of pillows placed between glass spheres to keep them in place. Let me, Let me just, just shrink, shrink even, even further, further and, and wake, wake up, up one, one of those smell receptors. receptors. Here. Here. Each of them is sensitive to a group of smells. I'll bind myself to one that's sensitive to my smell, just like a piece of puzzle fitting into place. The moment the receptor cell picks me up, it triggers a series of events. The receptor is now firing an electric signal through a thin tube called the axon. Let's follow it and see where it goes. We're now passing through a connective tissue that has olfactory glands. These are responsible for producing the mucus in your nose that we just swam through. Knock knock! <laughs> that feels like a hard shell. It's called the cribriform plate, 
and it separates your brain from your nasal cavity. It's got little holes in it to allow the nerves that pick up smells to go through. As we move upwards, the nerves are starting to connect into bundles. Squeezing through one of the holes in the plate, we see a bunch of them going further in. Oh, wow! Look at that! Those bundles of nerve connect to a little ball. That's the glomerulus. It receives the input from the little receptor cells, and it will process it further. Even though it receives smell data from one receptor, it can detect multiple smells. You've got around 1,800 of those spheres extending above each nostril, and they're all located on top of the bony plate we've just squeezed through. Now, we're in the outward extension of the brain that sits right above your nasal cavity. It looks like a bulb, which is why it's called the olfactory bulb. We've got a long road ahead of us. The little processing spheres are now extending to something called the mitral cells. These are neurons, and they look like little spiders with very long legs extending on each side. Let's move further into the bulb, to the olfactory tract and then inside the brain. The bulb is part of the limbic system. This is a large network of structures close to the middle of the brain that connects to the central nervous system. Brain cells carry the information to a small area in your brain called the amygdala. That's where you process your emotions. Stop it! Okay. It's also the area that activates your fight-or-flight response. Then the signals go to the hippocampus, the place where you make memories, process emotions, and learn stuff. Next stop, the thalamus, which sends some of the smell information to the orbital frontal cortex to connect it with your taste information. Smell is the only sensation that travels directly to the emotional part of your head. Other senses, such as sight and sound, first go to the thalamus. This acts as a relay center in the middle of the cerebral hemisphere, and it sends the data to other regions of the brain. But our sense of smell works in mysterious ways. When you haven't eaten for some time, your body produces a hormone called ghrelin. That hormone sends a signal to your brain, Hey, you need energy, buddy! I can't find anything in your stomach! Your brain responds by making you hungry. The same hormone activates some receptors, which trigger the little smell bulb we traveled through earlier. This gives you a heightened sense of smell to improve your chances of finding food. Now, imagine you're in a store, and someone sprays some perfume on a piece of paper. You lean in to sniff it and close your eyes. That action works like an elimination process, where you remove one of your senses to heighten the other ones. It's like when people turn down the radio in their cars when they're lost or trying to concentrate. When you have a cold, you lose your sense of smell. That's called anosmia, or smell blindness. And because the roof of your throat connects to your nose, when you chew on food, aromas are released and activate your smell receptors. With a stuffed nose, the smell molecules from the food can't reach the sensory cells. They can't make their way to the thalamus to connect to your sense of taste. This is why everything seems tasteless. Everyone smells the world using different receptors, And some scientists believe that every individual has at least one odor that they can't detect. It could be vanilla, garlic, menthol, coffee, or even certain kinds of fruit. Have you ever sniffed some spicy peppers that made you cough? (laughs) A few years ago, scientists discovered that the lungs have some odor receptors too. But instead of sending the spicy scent to your brain, they give you a signal to cough. Quite amazing, isn't it? Who else knows what the nose knows? Your toes? Well, maybe on some future video. Bye bye